Welcome to section 7.6, the last section we're covering in this unit. This is our double angle formulas. And so this is if you know an angle and want to find the sine, cosine, or tangent of twice that angle. We have several formulas. For sine of 2 theta, the formula is 2 times the sine of theta times cosine of theta. If you want the cosine of twice your angle, notice that we have three different formulas. You can use any one of the three. Just go based on what you have and which one you're more comfortable with. Tangent, we have one equation. So this time we're told the cosine of theta is negative 2 over 5, and theta is in quadrant 3. So we're going to go ahead and build our right triangle. We know that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And when we solve for the missing side, we get negative 2 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. Solving that gives us y is the square root of 21. And that has to be negative because of the quadrant we are in. Okay, so now that we've got the triangle defined or angle theta completely defined, I can go ahead and calculate sine of 2 theta. So sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times the sine of theta multiplied by the cosine of theta. And I'm just going to put in the values. Sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so negative square root of 21 over 5, and then multiplied by the cosine, which is negative 2 fifths. And when we multiply this out, this is really 2 over 1, so we have 2 times negative square root of 21 times negative 2, so the negatives cancel, giving me 4 square root of 21 over 1 times 5 times 5, which is 25. And that is the value of sine of 2 of theta. Cosine of 2 theta, again, I can use any one of these equations. doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the first equation, that cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And again, put in my values. The cosine value, we're told, was negative 2 fifths. We square that minus the sine value, which was negative square root of 21 over 5. We've got to square that. So be sure you're squaring each of them. Of course, when you square a negative, you get a positive. So negative 2 fifths squared gives me 4 over 25 minus, and again, that comes from the formula, square root of 21 over 5 squared gives me positive 21 over 25. When I combine these two terms, I get negative 17 over 25. And so those are my two answers for sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Okay, now in this example, we're going to have to apply some things from the last section also. So in this one, I've got cosine 2 theta times cosine of theta minus sine 2 theta sine theta equals 1 half and I need to solve it. So I'm going to treat the 2 theta as alpha and theta as beta. Again, this is going to be alpha, this will be beta. So I've got to look in my previous formulas, my sum and difference formulas, what equation had cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta? And that is the equation for cosine of alpha plus beta. So since this is cosine of alpha plus beta, I'm going to go ahead and combine this. So this gives me cosine of alpha, which was 2 theta, plus beta, which is theta. So this really gives me cosine of 3 theta equals 1 half. So now I have to go ahead and solve this. And it doesn't tell me to limit my solutions to uh, 0 to pi or to 0 to 2 pi. So I have to solve it, including the general formula. So I need to... On the unit circle, any angle that has a cosine value of 1 half is what 3 theta is equal to. So that's going to be pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And another angle that 3 theta is equal to is going to be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over k. And k is an integer. And that can be a positive or negative integer. But again, notice I have not solved the full problem yet. That's what 3 theta is equal to. So now I need to divide each term by 3. So what I really get is theta is equal to pi thirds divided by 3. Take the reciprocal and I get pi ninths 
plus 2 pi thirds multiplied by k. And I'm going to leave the k up there in the numerator. And over here we have theta equals 5 pi ninths plus 2 pi k divided by 3. So those are my solutions, my general solutions to this problem. And we're going to go ahead and do a couple more practice problems. So grab a scratch piece of paper and follow along. So my example three, I'm going to use the half angle formulas to find the exact value of sine of 22.5 degrees and cosine of 5 pi over 12. And the way we're going to do this, sine of the 1 half, using my formula for this, this is going to be equal to sine of 45 divided by 2. And that formula simply says that that is equal to 1 minus cosine of 45 divided by 2. And I go ahead and put in my values here. And that's going to be square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2. Okay, so let's try and deal with all of our stuff right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the reciprocal of this. And the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 half. So I get 1 half minus the square root of 2 over 4. And if I want to combine these, I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2. So now I have 2 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. And again, I'm going to combine them into a single fraction. So I get square root of 2 minus square root of 2 over 4. And I can separate the numerator from the denominator, which gives me the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2, all divided by 2. So that is my answer for the sine of 22.5, the exact value. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing now for cosine of 5 pi over 12. And this is equal to twice the numerator. So that's going to be cosine of 10 pi over 12 divided by 2. And 10 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 6. So my formula for half angles of cosine is that this is equal to the square root of 1 plus the cosine of 5 pi over 6, all of that divided by 2. And let's go ahead and put in the cosine value of 5 pi over 6. So we've got 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2. And again, I'm going to combine these. So let's see what we get here. If I take the reciprocal of 2, that's 1 half, so I have the square root of 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 4. So again, both terms get multiplied by that. And now if we combine, we multiply this by 2 over 2. So I have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4. And I go ahead and take out the denominator because that is a perfect square. So the numerator is the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2. And that is the cosine of 5 pi over 12. Okay, and let's go ahead now. And if I am given the cosine of alpha equals negative 1 fifth, and I'm told that alpha is in the second quadrant, I want to find the exact values for my sine of alpha divided by 2, cosine of alpha divided by 2, and tangent of alpha divided by 2. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and sketch my picture. So we said alpha is somewhere in the second quadrant. So that's alpha. I don't know how big it is, but the thing that I need to know is that where is alpha divided by 2? Which quadrant? Well, the smallest value that we could have in the second quadrant is just over 90. And half of 90 is in the first quadrant. The largest angle I could have is up to, but not including 180, half of one well, let's say half of 179, again, puts me into the first quadrant. So alpha divided by 2 must be in the first quadrant. So alpha divided by 2 is in quadrant 1. And I need to know that because I need to know what value, positive or negative, each of these 
uh, trig functions will have. And because it's in the first quadrant, everything is going to be positive. So we'll just go ahead with that now. Sine of alpha divided by 2 is equal to 1 plus cosine of alpha divided by 2. That is equal to 1 plus, oh, I haven't built my triangle yet, have I? Well, I guess we already know the cosine is negative 1 fifth. So 1 my, sorry, that's a minus right there. 1 minus the cosine of alpha divided by 2, square rooted. So I've got 1 minus a negative 1 fifth over 2, all of that square rooted. So 1 minus a negative 1 fifth becomes a positive. 1 plus 1 fifth is 6 fifths. So I've got 6 fifths divided by 2, square rooted. Well, that 2, I'm going to take the reciprocal of. That's going to give me 1 half. So this gives me the square root of 6 over 10. And now I want to simplify that. So that is the square root of 3 over 5. And if I further simplify and separate my numerator from the denominator, I then have to rationalize it, which gives me the square root of 15 over 15. Or, sorry, over 5. Got on a roll with the 15s there. So the sine of alpha divided by 2 is the square root of 15 divided by 5. Likewise, I'm going to do the same thing for cosine of alpha divided by 2. Cosine of alpha divided by 2, the equation is the square root of 1 plus the cosine of alpha divided by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and again plug in my values here. 1 plus a negative 1 fifth over 2. That's going to give me when I, 1 minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. So I have 4 fifths divided by 2. Take the reciprocal of 1 half and multiply 4 fifths by that. That gives me the square root of 4 over 10. Separate that out and reduce it. So that's going to give me 3 fifths. So the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. And again, we're going to go ahead and multiply here. So I've got to multiply, oops, not 3, 2, multiplied by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, and that gives me the square root of 10 over 5. So that is the cosine of alpha divided by 2. And finally, we're going to go ahead and do the tangent of alpha divided by 2. We have two equations for this half angle formula. The first one says that the tangent of alpha divided by 2 is the sine of alpha divided by 2 divided by cosine of alpha divided by 2. And that's not, that's the same equation we've always defined tangent by. Tangent of any angle is the sine of that angle divided by cosine. Now we know these two values. So the sine of alpha divided by 2, if you look up here, was the square root of 15 over 5 divided by the cosine of alpha divided by 2, which is the square root of 10 over 5. If I take the reciprocal here, I have the square root of 15 over 5 multiplied by the reciprocal 5 over the square root of 10. The 5's cancel, giving me the square root of 15 over the square root of 10. Okay, well, we do need to reduce this. So let's go, or not reduce it, but multiply by square root of 10 over the square root of 10 to rationalize this. And this gives me the square root of 150 divided by the square root of 100. So let's go ahead and simplify that. Square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 150, it's not a perfect square, but 150 can be simplified into 25 times 6. 25 is a perfect square. So I'm going to pull this out. So the square root of 25 is 5, divided by, or multiplied by the square root of 6. Now notice I can still simplify this. So the 5 and the 10 can both be divided by 5, so I get the square root of 6 over 2. And there we go with our tangent of alpha over 2 is equal to the square root of 6 divided by 2. There is a formula I can use. So if I hadn't already calculated the sine and cosine, I would go ahead and use my formula for the tangent of alpha divided by 2, which says that is equal to the square root of 1 minus the cosine of alpha over 2 divided, oops, all of that under the square root, over 1 plus the co, ah, sorry about this, 
1 plus the cosine of alpha divided by 2. So very similar to our equations for sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and put in our values here. We've got large square root 1 minus the cosine of alpha over 2 is the square root of 10 over 5. And 1 plus the cosine of alpha over 2 gives me this. Okay, let's go. Oh, I put in the cosine values of alpha over 2. Let me back up here a second. <clears throat> 